All right, so this is what I wanted to talk about today. Here we have some wick lanterns. Now these go by a couple different names. Wick lanterns, kerosene lanterns, oil lanterns, uh, but <laughs> You know, they're, they're all basically the same thing. There's some different types of them. There's the dead flame, the hot blast, and the cold blast lanterns. Both of these are cold blast lanterns. Traditionally, these were used more outdoors than indoors, although today you shouldn't have any trouble using them indoors uh, with the modern fuels that we have available. In fact, I use both of these indoors whenever the power goes out, and I've never had any trouble. Now, these are pretty simple to operate. You've got this little handle on top here, on top of your chimney, and a lot of people mistakenly think this is what you use to hang the lantern up. It's not the case. That's what your bail handle is for. This is what you use to hang it up with. But this thing here is used to lift up the chimney, there, so that your globe can come out. You can take your globe out for cleaning. It'll just slide out of this cage here give it a little bit of persuasion. There we go. And you can clean your globe. And it pops back in. You can reset it right there. All right. You also have a thumb lever here. This lifts up the burner assembly. And there's a little notch that locks it in place. This is what you would do to light the lantern. And then here you have a knob that you can turn to raise or lower your wick. So let's get one of these going. There we go. Now you don't want to turn up the flame right away. You want to keep it pretty low, at least for the first few minutes, maybe five or ten minutes. You see the globe is starting to frost up a little bit. That's due to condensation. That'll go away once everything warms up and gets an even temperature. Once you're certain that this thing is at an operating temperature, then you can raise or lower your wick. This particular one is the one that I really wanted to talk about. This one's a little bit different. This is the Dietz 2000, sometimes called the Dietz Millennium Cooking Lantern. And see, the, the chimney on this one does something a little a little different. You turn this. There we go. You don't want to force anything with these. This is all pretty, pretty thin stuff here. And the top of your chimney will come out. Now we have some accessories with this one. We got this little grill top here that fits in the place of the chimney. Give this a little Turn to try to lock it in place here. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty level. All right. Might be good to go. <laughs> and then we have a few other things. We got this little tiny frying pan deal that would sit on top here. We also have a little tiny pot here with a lid that does the same thing. So we can use the byproduct of combustion, the heat, to actually cook with, or at least that's what they say. Uh, we're going to see just how well this thing actually does today. Now I've got a couple different thermometers over here that say candy thermometer, and we're going to see if we can bring water to a boil or how close we can bring one to a boil. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, let's get this thing lit. Remember to keep your flame kind of low whenever you start, because that flame will grow over the course of maybe five or ten minutes. All right, so here's our little tiny pot here. Now you might notice this thing doesn't really look like it holds a whole lot. Here I have a measuring cup that up to the brim here holds one U.S. cup. There we go. Alright, so that is one measured cup of water. And this is about as full as you would want to get this thing. 
Remember, if this boils over or it tips one way or the other, you're going to have whatever liquid is in here coming down into your lantern, which is something you don't really want. So, we've established that this holds one cup. <laughs> start warming that. Now, this advertises that it can boil water. I have a little bit of experience with it and I know that I have trouble actually getting this thing up to a boiling temperature. A lot of people think that it boils water, but if you actually use a thermometer, uh, you'll find out that it gets pretty steamy pretty easily but as far as actually reaching a real boiling temperature of 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius, it actually falls a little bit short. So, right here I have my thermometer, and we're going to see how long it takes this to get up to temperature. So, I'm going to start my stopwatch, and we're going to wait. <laughs> All right, it's been about 15 minutes now, and we are up to about 150 degrees. So the temperature is rising. Now, I've adjusted this flame height about as high as I can and have it still be an efficient burn. Uh, but you might notice the difference in the flames here. On the fear hand, we got this almost boringly stable, bright white flame. And here on the deets, we've got a little bit of yellow, and it's kind of flickering around. Well, that's because the draft is affected whenever you put this grill top on here. Uh, these burner tubes on the sides of these cold blast lanterns aren't there just for looks. That actually creates a draft and that's what gives you that nice stable bright flame. And whenever you put that grill top on there, that's going to be affected. So you're going to have a little bit of flicker with this. Now, how do you know what your maximum flame height is? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Once your lantern is up to operating temperature after 10, 15 minutes, uh, depending on the ambient temperature, and let's see out here it's about 60 degrees, you're going to slowly raise your flame height and keep an eye on your chimney. Sometimes this is difficult to see, uh, but you're going to raise it up until you see smoke. Okay, I see it there. So we're going to back off until you no longer see any smoke. All right. Okay, I'm not getting any smoke there. So the highest that you can get the flame without actually seeing any smoke, which would indicate uh, inefficient combustion. That's going to be your maximum flame height. This is your maximum light output that the lantern is going to give you. If you go beyond that, you're going to smoke up the globe. You're going to have to clean your globes. You're going to have a, a decrease in light output. So there you go. All right, let's check it again. We are right at 170 degrees at 20 minutes. So don't expect a quick meal out of this. <laughs> now. How much light output is this actually going to give you in a real world scenario? Well, we're just going to use this one. I'm going to go ahead and put this one out. That way we'll just have one lantern going. Now you can lower the flame to put this out. Okay, and that will go out once you get it down far enough. Or you can lift up your globe and then just blow. There you go. And that extinguishes your flame. So, let's turn these other lights out. All right. So this is how much light output you get with just the Dietz lantern. It's a very nice ambiance, but uh, doesn't give you a whole lot to work with. <laughs> but you do get enough to read with, uh, just barely. All right, what do we got? We are at 
about 190 degrees at 30 minutes. So that's the limit of this thermometer here. I'm going to remove that. As you see, it's nice and steamy. We're going to have to put in this other thermometer because this one only goes up to 190. If we want to actually see if we're going to boil, we're going to have to use this one. Because this one is a little bit larger, we can't really seal up our pot quite as well. So it may have a little difficulty getting above that temperature. All right, it is now just past 40 minutes, and we have it's still 190 degrees. Uh, we're still getting a lot of steam, but we're not getting a boil. Water's pretty hot. It's not boiling hot. <laughs> so, since we don't have a temperature increase in that amount of time, I'm going to say that that's all the hotter that this thing is going to get. Now, what we can try to do to get the water up to a boil, we can raise this flame. Alright, I'm getting a lot of smoke now. But we're just going to see what it takes to get this thing to a boil. We're going to have a lot of soot. <laughs> but let's try it. Alright, we are at an hour, and I'm going to go ahead and call it. And see what we got. We are at still about still under 200 well if you're going for a boil you're going to be disappointed <laughs> so we're getting a lot of soot here we we're hanging at about 198 degrees Fahrenheit Ooh, that's hot that is hot. Alright. Might be able to see we got a lot of soot on the bottom here. There you go. And we've lost a significant portion of our water here uh, just from steam. Let's see how much we got. Okay. Well, we are at about three quarters of a cup. So, <laughs> we lost a quarter cup due to steam, and this is pretty nasty now. I'm going to have to clean this stuff up. Alright, so there you go. There's our little experiment. It's very unscientific. Uh, let me give you a few little notes here just based on my experience with these things. I've had both of these lanterns for about two years now. Uh, I do know that under the right circumstances you can actually get this to a boil. Uh, but you got to leave the lid on to conserve some of that heat. As you can see with the thermometer in there, we had a significant gap. So, uh, you will get a ton of soot. You have to burn this terribly inefficiently to get it up to a boil. You can see just there with the thermometer in there, you're just not going to be able to get it much above 190 degrees, even if you're running pretty inefficiently. Uh, as far as normal use, if you do have the lid on it, and you've got a cup of liquid in there, you can reasonably expect, if you're burning this the way that it's supposed to be, without getting a whole lot of smoke, uh, about 170, 180 degrees based on your conditions uh, within about 15 minutes. So, is it worth it? 
Well, these aren't terribly expensive. I think it's about 40 bucks, maybe a little bit less. Uh, and for what it does, it gives you a nice source of light and you do get some heat. Hey, that's a good way to use the, the byproduct of the combustion here, that heat, to do something else. So now if the power is out and you've got nothing better to do than sit here and warm up something, uh, you know, 170, 180 degrees, you know, that's all you're going to need for certain applications, you know, warming up some, some soup or maybe a hot beverage. That's going to be just fine. So, yeah, yeah, totally, it's worth it. Uh, as far as actually doing any type of serious cooking with it or water purification, it, it, it's just not going to happen. You know, it, it, it's a lantern. <laughs> you know, you're going to be better off with just about anything. But if you just want to warm something up, you know, treat it like, like sterno. You know, it's going to be tough to boil anything with sterno, but, you know, it can warm up stuff pretty well. All right, so there you go. That has been the Dietz 2000 the Dietz Millennium uh, cooking lantern and we have the fear hand lantern. Alright guys that is all the time that I have for today I hope you enjoyed it and until next time thumbs up